Welcome to this week's episode of Journey of a Fisherman and I'm going to be joined with my good mate Willie from Kiwi Blade Knives. We're going to have a chilled out day contacting fishing here on the beach. We're going to find out a little bit more about Willie's passion for custom knife building. But first things first, we're going to bait up and we're going to get fishing. There you go, we're fishing. 45 minute wait. All right, it's now time to let the bait soak and uh, let's find out what makes these custom knives so special. So Willie, where did this uh, passion to build these truly amazing knives come from, mate? It started when I was about 16, Tony. I built my first knife back then as, as, a, as a young man on a survival course. And, and, and during my military career, I started building knives to understand how these things work and what makes a good blade um, it just flew on from there. So Willie, what's the South African doing in New Zealand? Came here for a, another future for my children, um, another chance in life, and a beautiful place that we live in here in New Zealand. Uh, I, wanna, I don't want to be anywhere, anywhere else, I love this place. So Willie, just looking at this huge selection of knives here, there's just not one knife for one application? Yeah, absolutely not, Tony. Like for instance, this little knife here, general purpose hunting and fishing knife, you can use it as a bait knife or skinning in the bush. Um, this little Santoku, uh, which is Japanese style. Japan, Japanese style knife, general purpose knife for the kitchen. It's a workhorse of the kitchen. Wow, and that's, that's quite a, an amazing looking knife too, eh? Wow. It's a lovely 12 inch filleting blade for be breaking down big fish carcasses. Yep, perfect on the uh, kingies, eh? Kingies, hapuka, that will do the job. Um, this little blade here, because of the long design in the blade, um, we can, it's lovely for sashimi. For sashimi? Sashimi, and even, even brisket if you like. Okay. Well, hopefully um, we'll put that one to use later on. This lovely cleaver, quite heavy, for breaking down big bones and, and ribs, with a bit of a spine work on the back, just for, for aesthetics. Small 16-inch filleting knife, um, very light. And it's a good steering knife. It will actually steer where you want to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, breaking down the carcass. Well. Jeez, and one thing I notice: all these knives, they they feel really, really balanced and, and really comfortable to hang on to. They are. That's what they designed for. The da the balance is is what it's all about, Tony. Yeah. I know what this one's for. That's a brisket well, knife, isn't it? This is a brisket knife with a grant and edge, and I put all the scalloping in the blade myself with a Dremel. Yeah. Um, totally handcrafted with a Kiri Knight handle. And those uh, serrations in there, that's for ease of cutting to get a little bit of air into there so you, nothing sticks to the blade? Absolutely, Tony. And and also you have less bearing surface because right. of the scalloping. Yep. So that is ease of cutting, nothing sticks to the blade. Well, Willie, this is uh, my favorite knife. I use it just about every single day. It's a knife that you actually handcrafted for me. Um, and probably over the years I've probably guilty for neglecting my knives. I don't keep them as sharp as I probably should. What's a good way of really caring for your knife? Uh, yeah, Tony, it's just about, for instance, this is high carbon blade, always hand wash and dry. Yep. And then we want to oil it. Any food grade oil, always. Just like a little um, bit of olive oil and a paper towel. It's just for that, yes. And it will give us that barrier against moisture um, that will just protect this particular blade very well and it will last you for years if you care for it like that. Well, well as you can see, it's probably not the sharpest uh, it, it could be. Well, Tony, that's not a problem. I got my sharpening set here and we can get into it soon. Well, I think it's, uh, baits have been soaking for about 45 minutes now. I think it's time to check the contact and let's get into it. Well, this is a hell of a lot of hard work. I think I need a drink. Nice little quenching, uh, Citrus beer. Foot level one. Freeze up a hand for uh, leaning and uh, refreshments. Hey guys, due to a technical glitch, we couldn't record 
bringing in our set. So we're here on another day, and we're about to uh, pull our Kontiki line in once again, so stay tuned. Boy, that's a beautiful, healthy fish. Look at that. Look at the beautiful color from that fish. My word, that is stunning. Look at that nice panny. That's a beauty. a bit of sashimi with a little snack. Tony, I think before you start filleting, let's give this knife a bit of a tickle up. And Willie, you don't you, you use a steel as such, you use a stone, yeah? No, I use Japanese water stones, um, about 99% of all my sharpening. And I start off at about 220 grit, and I work right up to a 30,000 diamond paste on a leather backing and we will get around to that so I'm just going to start on your knife on 800 we roll the knife over to the apex have a two or three fingers on the knife where that can guide us and roll it and you'll feel where is that apex of that knife on the stone cut into the apex and re release and cut again yeah. and release and cut again it's not just a back and forth motion it is cutting into the apex and then reset Right, so you're cutting, you're cutting on that when you're coming towards yes. it. Yes, and it's about constant angle, feel for it. If you go over that apex or here on the stone, it will start screaming at you. It's very, it's a very coarse or a sharp sound. Oh, yeah. Yep. yeah, 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 you can hear that. Yeah. Yep. Listen to that and listen to that. Yep. So, yeah, gotcha. So, we've done what we needed to do on this 800 grit. Now we're going to swap to a 3000 grit. Right, so you're just now working through finer and finer. Finer and finer and finer. Uh, Tony, can you just pass me some of the water? Make sure that our stone is nice and wet. Um, normally I keep my stones soaking wet. And again, we feel for that apex. It's all about hearing and feeling. Yeah, that's a really, really good tip that, because I always in the past thought when, it, when you heard that grinding noise, you're actually getting a better cut, but it's actually the opposite. Yeah, you've got to be you've careful. With something today. Yeah, you, you'll round the edge. Okay, we've done enough on the 3000, that apex is beautiful, and we're going to swap now to a 10,000 grit. And Tony, can you pass me some of that water again? And just wet that stone for me. Thank you so much. And now what we do with the 10,000, we're just polishing that apex that we fit with, that we shaped with the previous stones. And it's hardly it's, making any noise today, it's so smooth, eh? It is so smooth, it's like polishing on a glass. So, Willie, a conventional steel, that's just good for touching up the edge, yeah? Yeah, it is, but on, on these type of, of, of knives that, that, that uh, I made you, the steel is actually too hard for a normal, ordinary steel. What we normally would use is a ceramic rod. Right, yeah. So, yeah. which is much finer. And then the key thing is also just when you put your ceramic rod down, you hold it like that. It's just on a 15 degree angle, you go on either side of the rod. That's right, three or four yeah. You just want to align well sometimes there's a micro burr forming yeah. you just want to line that the micro burr yeah i actually strop that off and that is the next step when you're going to get to um once i finish with this ten thousand, and there's almost no burr there uh, that you can feel right it's because this stone is so fine it polishes all that away back in my old days i was yes. a joiner we used yes. to do that with our chisels on a piece of leather uh, absolutely and i do the same thing here the only thing on this leather strop there's thirty thousand diamond right. paste on it and all I do is I just strop on it. Ah, so you're pulling it away, just taking the burr. Now I pull away, not going into the apex, I'm going away from the apex. Because if you cut into the apex, now you'll cut the leather. Yes. And I always just go away. And you can already see the yeah. shine on that apex. And uh, for the old saying, isn't it, a sharp knife is a safe knife, isn't it? Absolutely. A sharp knife you can steer, a blunt knife will go where it wants to, not where you want it to go. Yeah. Well, Tony, I think that apex is in beautiful, beautiful condition now. Awesome. I can't wait to give it a go. It's my favourite knife. 
and I'm actually damn hungry, so let's get this. Uh... Whoa, that just cut through that like butter. And you're right, with a um, sharp knife, it just glides through. I'm already seeing the benefits now of my freshly sharpened knife. Well, it's just coming off there real easy. Whoa, that cuts so nice, Willie. Thank you. So <laughs> no, whiteies. Let's get this off here. You can just feel it coming off the skin so much easier. Once you've got a nice sharp knife, you can uh, you you are in control again. You know, like it will it will steer, Tony, and that, yeah. that's a that's that's a safety thing about it. You know, it will go where you want it to go, not where it wants to go. Right, Willie, I've got a dipping sauce that I prepared earlier on. My favourite dipping sauce. That looks amazing, Tony. Yep. Absolutely. I'll let you can carry on cutting that, and I'm going to start slicing this uh, the sashimi up. Tony, before you do that, um, I know that you are the, the master and the king of kingfish, so uh, I've made you this 12-inch fillenting knife uh, out of N690 stainless to break down big kingfish and uh, I hope you will use it for its purpose. Whoa, this is going to be insane for those big things. <laughs> it's the perfect knife for breaking them down. Well, let's christen today and uh, start slicing some sashimi. That will be beautiful, I can't wait. And this is like a uh, hot knife through butter. In this case, it's a kiwi blade through snapper. <laughs> well, this is done. Well, Willie, I think we're ready to taste our spoils from today. Thank you so much for everything that you've shown us. Your knives are absolutely beautiful. The knives that you've made me are absolutely stunning. Uh, and we've learned so much from, uh, you know, from the day. So, bon appétit. Thank you Enjoy. so much, Tony. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here with you in this beautiful, beautiful part of the world. It's a certainly amazing part of the world, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. We Get are spoiled. It. Don't invite me. That stuff is beautiful. Nice, isn't it? So if you want to find out more about the Kiwi Blade knives, check out the website. Absolutely awesome handcrafted knives, and I can't recommend them enough. Thank you, Willie. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you for being, being here with you and sharing this beautiful place and lovely fresh snapper, sashimi. Cannot get better. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you so much. A massive thanks to our amazing team that makes this journey possible. Ford for tough, safe tow vehicles, helping us go further in comfort and style. Custom Alloy Marine Trailers, the best looking, safest, low maintenance trailers we've ever used. Extreme Boats, get us to the fish in their award winning hulls with unmatched stability, performance and looks making these the ultimate extreme offshore fishing vessel. Honda Outboards, ensuring we get home safely with their quiet, fuel efficient, strong and reliable four stroke outboards. Garmin Marine for setting up our vessels with market leading intuitive electronics that help us navigate, search for and find trophy fish. Shimano for hooking us up with the latest technology and rods, reels and accessories, helping our anglers land the fish of their dreams. And of course the coverage we get to share this journey from New Zealand's largest fishing magazine, New Zealand Fishing News. And DB Export for keeping us refreshed with their quality beverages. And Sims Products and Apparel for keeping us covered in a wide range of extreme elements. This journey would not be possible without the support from Hunting and Fishing New Zealand. Stores located nationwide, overflowing with friendly, knowledgeable advice, quality products that are focused on keeping us out there and doing it. A big shout out to our other great brand partners for their quality services and products that keeps this journey rolling. Keep up to date with the journey on our website, Facebook page and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel.